Hi, I'm Greg Lang from Michigan State University. I'm here in Grand Rapids at the Great Lakes Fruit, Vegetable, and Farm Market Expo, where I just spoke in the Sweet Cherry session on new high-density, labor-efficient training systems or canopy architectures for sweet cherries. I'm very excited by this work because I think it gives our growers here in the Midwest the opportunity to grow fresh market sweet cherries in a very labor-efficient way, a way that we can grow smaller trees, cover them for protection from birds, from rain, uh, even some perhaps some frost protection, some of the major challenges that we've had. And so in this presentation I talked about four different canopy architectures that we're studying to understand what the ramifications are for labor savings, for fruit quality, for earliness of productivity, for total yield, etc. I'm about to show you a series of diagrams that illustrate one of those training systems. It's a system that we call the tall spindle axe, patterned somewhat after the tall spindle training system of apples, but there are some significant differences in cherry, and I'll go through that in the diagrams. I'll take you through the first three years of developing a tall spindle axe tree. I put together some very simple illustrations of the first three years of pruning and training for the tall spindle X cherry training system or what we call TSA. So this first illustration shows essentially the tree at planting. Taking a nursery tree that might have one or two or three feathers or side branches coming from the nursery. Those are removed at the time of planting. We don't head the tree. We want to make sure that it only has one strong growing point, hence the removal of the side branches. After we've done that, we then remove the lower branches, or sorry, the lower buds that are below about two feet. The scale on this drawing is seven feet across the bottom and up to nine feet across the top. That's the future uh, canopy space that we're trying to develop this tree into over the course of the next three years. So that lower two feet of, of the leader of the tree is really not uh, anything of value to us other than supporting the upper fruiting units that we then will develop. So here we've removed all of the buds below about two feet. The pink dots represent growing points. And the next step then is to activate selectively those growing points to create the future lateral branches that we want. There we've gone backwards. That's what we've removed. Here's we've removed the lower buds. And here's where the upper bud selection will take place. What we will end up with at the end of this bud, end of this bud selection process is a uh, activated bud turning into a branch about every four to four and a half inches from the terminal down to that point that we removed all of the lower buds. This bud selection can be done by using uh, plant hormone to stimulate the buds to grow out. And that hormone uh, concoction is called promelin or can be done by scoring the bark just above the buds that we've selected, or it can be done by removing the intervening buds around the buds that we've selected to reduce the number of buds that uh, could possibly grow out. So here we've selected the buds, let's say we've activated them, uh, the tree has been planted, it starts to grow in the spring, and so this would be the initial growth from all of those bud activations plus the new terminal. So we finished year one with new lateral shoots, hopefully 8 to 10 or 12 lateral shoots, and of course the new terminal growth. That will take us into the dormant season, and here we begin planning for year two. Once again, we need to select the buds at the top of the tree uh, for those that we want to activate. The lower shoots that it grew in year one, we impose pruning cuts on, to remove about 15 to 25 percent depending on how long they are. The longer the shoot, the higher the percentage that we would remove. So that we're leaving about 75 to 85 percent of the shoot that grew in year one. That will accomplish two things for us. It will double the leaf area because that pruning cut will stimulate new, uh, two new shoots from each place where we make a cut. And by virtue of pruning off that last 15 to 25 percent, we are removing about 30 to 40 percent of next year's crop. 
which occurs in a very tight cluster at the terminus of last year's growth. So we're making a preemptive cut to balance the future fruit growth while we're also increasing the current leaf area. During year two, we will also usually be able to accomplish a harvest of a small amount of fruit formed at the base of each of those shoots that grew in year one. So every shoot you grow in year one will give you a little bit of fruit at its base in year two. This is because we've planted these orchards on uh, very precocious rootstocks, such as Gisela 3 or 5 or 6 or 12. We then go in through uh, the rest of the growth of year 2, and we move into the dormant period between year 2 and 3. We have now most of the tree's canopy taken up. Uh, we will do any final bud selection at the top of the tree to maintain our nice Christmas tree shape. We will again make our pruning cuts to remove the final 15 to 25 percent of each shoot and that will stimulate the same sort of pattern that we saw in year two. We'll get two new shoots every place we make a pruning cut. We'll get a little bit of fruit at the base of every shoot that grew in year two and we get a lot of fruit on the fruiting spurs for the shoots that grew in year three, sorry, that grew in year one. So year one shoots give us spur fruit in year three and we get basil shoots, basil fruit on shoots that grew the previous year. So you can see here, we are in the third year. We have filled probably 80% of the space we've allotted to this tree. We have a nice yield, and that tree grows out after we harvest the fruit. You can see we've filled the space, the seven feet by nine foot tall space for the most part, and we'll actually do a little bit of summer pruning in this third year to maintain good light into the developing flower buds. And that takes us through years one, two, and three of the tall spindle axe tree. For further information about the kind of work that I've just described, or actually various other aspects of new research in sweet cherry work, uh, you can go to worldwideweb.cherries.msu.edu for some training videos, which includes some training tips for the TSA system, as well as the other three systems, the UFO, the KGB, and the SSA, you can go to www.gieselacherry.com. We have a third website that's of value. The easiest way to find that website is just to Google my name, Greg Lang, and Cherry, and it'll pop up and go right to my website, but the name is too long to pass along in this venue.